This is Soloist from Jackson. Oh, wait. That's not the right Soloist for this channel. Hold on. Okay, we got the right Soloist this time. Roll that intro. This is your truly diabetic cycling coming at you once again and thank you for spending your time with me today this channel is sponsored by and brought to you by as always none other than my own damn wallet I don't have any pressive review bikes that I need to return back after just a one short ride. I don't have to chase any advertising money to keep my magazine in publication. I'm not a douchey influencer with some kind of a message to shove down your throat, nor do I own a bike shop where I need to sell you something. I am gonna be as straightforward, as unbiased as one can be. If that is your sort of thing, please do me solid and click on that subscribe button. Hit the like, obviously, and ask me any questions in regards to this episode down below in the comment section. So over the last uh, couple dozen years, I've had the pleasure of owning and riding all the bikes that I'm gonna list right here and then some that I'm sure I have forgotten. So those will contribute to the baseline that this review is based on. Wow. 
All right, so let's talk about Cervelo's road lineup real quick. Now, in the old days, they used to have different designation for trim levels denoted by numbers. So five meant top of the line. They had the three, which was middle of the road. Then the two, which was more or less entry level. So they used to have the R5, R3, R2, S5, S3, S2 kind of deal. So today, they it's unfortunate they don't have that designation anymore. They sort of simplified their manufacturing process. So, so now you have uh, basically this lineup from Cervelo. You have the R5, which is raced by the Prails. It's the all lightweight mountain conquering bike, a climber basically. Then they have the S5, which is the aero, all things aero. This is the flag bearing, you know, the Cervelo has been synonymous with aero since the early 2000s. So S5 is just that. Then they have uh, what's called Caledonia. So Caledonia is the all-terrain uh, bike. When you have a long day out on the saddle, you just don't know whether it's gonna be all pavement mixed with some dirt. So you just have this one bike that sort of a does it all-terrain kind of a bike. Then we come to Soloist, which this review is the, based on. So Soloist, as it was launched, they, Cervelo, introduced it as a, something that sits between the R5 and S5. So it is a little bit more aero than the R5. It is a little lighter than the S5. So it sort of sits in the middle. And if you've seen my first impression video, which I'll link right here, uh, one of the things that I wondered about when I first got this frame set to build uh, my bike with was, you know, okay, so it's fine that it sits in between the lightweight and the aero, but is it going to be jack of all trades or master of none? You know, where, you know, where do we stand on that? So that was one of the uh, questions that I had going in. And then um, as of today, that I also want to share with you one thing. So despite Cervelo positioning this bike, something in between R5 and S5, I don't want that to confuse you because there's that five designation, right? So five in Cervelo's lineup means it's a top of the line. So for instance, R5 frame set costs you $5,500, S5 frame set costs you $5,500. But the Soloist frame set only costs $2,700, which is exactly the half. So despite they position this as something in between, it's not at the level of the what number five would carry in Cervelo's uh, ecosystem. So I think uh, if, if they would have still made the um, different trim levels, this would carry the uh, badge three, probably something like a soloist three. Uh, if they had a soloist five, yes, then it would be something comparable as something that sits in between the R5 and the S5. So who is this bike for? This is basically something that I would answer to you as this way. So this is a bike for someone like me and you, really. Um, someone who's not pro sponsored and someone who really wants one bike that does everything. One bike that you can take to every type of ride, whether you're going to go take down a mountain, whether you're going to go uh, race up a crit or something, just flat rollers. So this is a one bike that really does everything. So that's their way of presenting this bike to you and me as consumers. So, so I'm going to take you through what I think about it. So if you've been riding for a while, the name Soloist will be familiar to you because Cervelo, when they hit the scene uh, back in the day, I mean, we're talking a couple dozen years ago, Soloist was an aluminum frame that was flying the whole aero advancements in bike frame. So it was aluminum, but it had this uh, very aero tubing shape and Team CSC at the time was riding soloists um, by Cervelo at the like a Tour de France. What was it? Like a back in year 2008, Tour was won by none other than Carlo Sastra. You might be asking who? Yeah, so after Lance's dominance ended and the whole Floyd Landis BS happened, then Carlos Sastra won the tour in 2008 aboard Cervelo Soloist. Now, that was a pretty high year for Cervelo, I'm sure. 
However, it was a pretty low year for the tour when somebody like Carlos Sastra of all people won the tour. So the soloist back in the day was the Vrooman and Y2 guys that uh, started Cervelo. It was their brainchild as the all aero bike, which really started the whole aero boom, uh, if you really think about it. Not to say aero ideas and bikes didn't exist before that, but I, I think I'm not, I wouldn't be wrong in saying that uh, Cervelo soloist really took it to the next level back then. So Soloist as a model went away for a bunch of years, but a couple months ago, as you all know, uh, made a comeback. Sorvello uh, reintroduced the model as something that sits between the lightweight climber and the all-out aero. Now Soloist is all carbon, as you would expect, and borrows heavily from both the R5 and S5, as they say. So while some of the elitist roadies out there may scoff at this thing, thinking, hey, it's not a pro-level, pro-sponsored bike, like discounting the bike in that manner, I actually think this is a great thing because it's a bike that's actually designed for people like me and you, weekend warriors, part-time racers, the club riders, the bike is literally for the normal Joes like me and you. So here's the thing. Your Dogmas, your S-Works Tarmac SL7s, your Aeroads, your System 6s, these are all designed and built with the pro guys riding at the pro tours. The in, in you know in mind so these are going to be super aggressive in geometry because pro guys you know they can get to super aggressive position and maintain all that insane power output and these are younger guys that have you know flexibility so they could you know work with these um super race oriented geometry and some may even you know obviously the bike companies got the science down to a point where they know how to make certain parts of the frame stiff, certain parts of the bike super compliant. So, you know, the guy, the, the pro tour guys could spend 200 miles a day for 20 days, you know, straight. But for people like you, we don't need that kind of, you know, racy geometry and something that's more designed for the pros we you and i don't need that that's where i think the guys at cervello did a real bang up job keeping the cost down giving us a bike that is absolutely solid and if you really think about those uh you know pro level frames like the dogma frame is a sixty eight hundred dollars your s works tarmac sl7 frame is well over five thousand dollars the cervellos that i mentioned earlier r5 and s5 those things are fifty five hundred dollars frame sets so with all that in mind the frames that come in at twenty seven hundred dollars a lot more easier on our wallets but how much are you sacrificing or are you sacrificing at all so that's what i'm here to show you all right so i'm gonna open up this section with this uh, statement so just because it was my very last episode so unlike the all china velo build frame which had all kinds of issues right out of the box because it was not manufactured with the uh, utmost highest level of standards and uh, tolerances uh, manufacturing tolerances this frame set out of the box everything was square everything was exactly lined everything all the, the the holes that need to be drilled out they were all just meticulously impeccably machined so there was zero problem and that's how a frame set should be and of course it is naturally something you would expect from a name like cervello to put out so just buying the frame set, I did not receive, it, it wasn't part of the uh, package, the ST36 stem that they introduced with the frame set, with the bike, which the stem has a uh, some sort of a bracket at the bottom side of the stem so that your cables could go under the stem so they could have a somewhat of a neater integration look without having to do the full on integrated handlebar cockpit situation. 
um, I did not receive that because I just used something I had laying around in my garage which I which was the Vision Metron 5D integrated handlebar that has the stem and the bar all together okay so for the drivetrain I went with the Shimano Ultegra Di2 12 speed which you just can't go wrong uh, not a pro sponsored rider so I don't really need Dura Ace this is this get uh, Ultegra gives me all the performance of Dura Ace at the half the cost. So it's solid, it's good. All right, so for this review, I've put down a ton of miles on this bike. So about 400 of that was done on Zip 303S wheel set. And then another 200 or so, maybe about 250 miles were done on Shimano Dura Ace uh, wheels, the C36 and the C50 wheel sets. If you buy complete bikes from Cervelo, uh, the Ultegra build and the Force build would come with their reserve, their in-house brand that they do with Cannondale so it would come with the reserve wheels 40 at the front 44 in the back if you buy the rival access build it comes with the fulcrum 600 so take that into consideration when I speak about my bike and my build it's it, it's not I'm a, my bike is differently built than what the stock factory spec builds dictate now I have to supply my own bottom bracket here. Uh, the bottom bracket standard Cervelo uses a uh, T47B Bright, and um, a lot of a bunch of people really ha have a uh, hatred towards the B Bright bottom bracket, and um, you know T47. Uh, you know again, a bunch of people have different opinions. So what I did here, I never actually had a problem with the B Bright bottom bracket. And then, um, so for this build, I went and ordered Kogel T47 asymmetrical B bright bottom bracket, which was a bit of a uh, luxury item actually, if you think about it. But it is a solid. If it is possible to fall in love with a bottom bracket, I have fallen in love because this Kogel bottom bracket is just absolutely smooth, rolls indefinitely, and just there's zero friction. So it makes the bike that much more special. Rounding out the build, uh, currently, uh, lately, I am almost exclusively riding NV SES 29mm tires, so that's uh, what's on there. Um, I believe my zip wheels had different tires at the time, Pirelli's, so uh, I've, uh, I've tested the Cervelo now several hundred miles on both um, different platforms of tires as well. In terms of weight, which all of you are uh, wondering about, so when I measure bikes, I, I measure full rideable condition. So it's a full bike, out front computer mount, bottle cages, and my pedals. So all that on there, when I weighed it, with the Zip 303S on there, it was hair over 18 pounds with the Ultegra Di2 12 speed. And then it dropped below 18 pounds. It was just a hair under 18 pounds with the Dura Ace wheels. So whether that's light to you, heavy to you, I don't know. Suits me just fine as a system weight. All right, so let's now talk about sizing. My Cervelo here is 51 centimeters, as I mentioned earlier. My cockpit is 100 long, 40 wide. And um, when I'm buying a bike that uh, sight unseen, uh, like online or something, then what I'm typically looking for is a stack of about 530 and reach of about 377. This frame with the size 51, the stack was 515, slightly lower, and then our reach came in at a 374. So basically, as far as the geometry was concerned, it's bang on for my fit. Now, to give you some reference, I'm gonna rattle off some numbers from other bikes that I've uh, owned and written, so you kind of get an idea of what the sizing would be, whether true, smaller, or larger. So my factor is 52. My Pinarello Prince is a 51 and a half. My Orbea Orca, I ride a 51. On a Cannondale, I would have to ride either 50 or 52, depending on which model and um, how the geometry would come. And uh, my BMC 
was 51 which fit me just right and then on giant i would have to ride stair small and for canyon i normally ride either extra small or small depending on where that depending on the overall geometry and this bike with the size 51 the wheelbase is 974 so it's tight and it's very zippy and sporty it will not give you any sort of a sluggish feel in terms of uh the overall handling characteristic characteristics of the bike as you will find out more as this review video goes on all right so Talking about design and aesthetics, so this bike does not have any gimmicks like the air deflectors on the new Bianchi Ultras or gaping hole under your ass. Did I just say gaping hole under your ass? Like the Trek Madones. Does not have a funky head tube steerer situation like the brother Cervelo S5, nor does it have a funky looking cockpit like the Cervelo S5 or the new Ultra again. It also does not have overly exaggerated, possibly grotesque design cues such as overly sculpted lines of something like the Pinarello Dogmas and even my prints. Um, the design aesthetics wise it's very clean. With the lines are so clean, the bike to me when I look at it, it really has the classic vibe while giving you all the modern appearance. It's a real good combination of the classic and the modern. Just nice clean bike aesthetics without any marketing ploy baggage that comes with it. That all said, the bike also does come with the world's ugliest seat post, which I can't do anything about. So the down tube and the seat tube has uh, what you would expect, uh, where it's borrowing the uh, aero aesthetics. So it's going to have the cam tail truncated foil design, but they're not overly like a truncated. You know, some bike tubings, when you look at it, it's just chopped off immediately for the uh, uh, the cam tail effect. But it's very uh, tastefully done, in my opinion. So um, it's. Uh, it, it, it's not offensive in terms of uh, how they executed the whole cam tail design. In terms of a tire clearance of both the front and the rear, I'm running 29 mil right now. And if you take out my caliper and measure, you will notice that it is actually true 29 mil with my uh, Shimano Dura Ace wheels. And uh, you could safely run 32 mil and perhaps possibly even 34, but that would be pushing your luck. Uh, but I would say up to 32, you are well within and very safe. Uh, with the uh, gap between the fork as well as the seat stays and the chain stays, there is enough room both sides for you to go with wider tires. Now, as mentioned earlier, the stack height was a slightly lower than what I normally look for, and that's a good sign because the lower stack uh, happening because of the shorter head tube does give you racy disposition on the bike despite this not really being a bike that's designed to be raced by pros at pro tour level so you do have a semi-aggressive position on the bike and who doesn't like being aero to wrap up the aesthetics the alpen glow white finish that i have has a subtle metallic sparkle undertone so when the sun hits it just right or when you're looking at the bike from like a different angle ever so slightly it would give you a different light reflection where it's not just basic white like you think the bike is so that's a plus Okay, let's talk about how the bike rides, which is the most important thing. Now, do keep in mind, my build is very different than what Cervelo sells as complete bikes, as well as probably different than how you would build yours out with the frame set if you're doing it the way I did. Um, if you buy the, uh, the complete bikes from Cervelo, you would have different bottom bracket, different cockpit, and mostly importantly, different wheels. So the characteristics will all be slightly different. So do take my feedback with grain of salt. 
So the overall characteristics, one word that I would like to use to describe this bike's ride feedback, ride characteristics would be one word, and that's the word scalpel. The reason why I would use that word is because this bike's this bike has absolutely impeccable handling with the scalpel like precision. So the I would explain a little bit further. So I've had a couple dozen bikes last couple dozen years. I've ridden enough where I might say the handling of this bike, especially the front end, probably is one of the best performing bike despite the price range, despite the marketing stuff, despite the design cues, despite the technology that goes in and everything. I'm only concerned about how bike feels when I'm riding it. So, um, and I'm hoping you could appreciate that because that's all I'm doing. I, I don't do any scientific uh, reviews uh, here on my channel. So when I'm talking about precision and handling, I'll tell you that it's the bike is just no nonsense, right? There is no stupid gimmicky stuff happening here with the bike. It's just well designed. And when I'm slicing a corner at high speed, I could take my knee down to the ground like a MotoGP racer and I could just slice that corner and trust the bike to hold the line where I'm pointing. And that is very important. Meanwhile, the stiffness of, of the head tube as well as the fork in tandem when they work together it gives the, it gives you that absolute precise control in terms of handling characteristics at the same time on all the rides that i've taken it um, anything over 70 miles uh would never fatigue now all, all, you know to keep in mind i do have a cockpit that's all carbon all one single piece integrated bar so the vibration dampening it will also happen there as well so um, your experience your mileage may vary here but handling wise it is just absolutely superb couple that with the super thin seat stays and the seat seat stays meet the seat tube at a lower level where you have it gives you that compliance of the post having a little bit of a flex to give you that all important comfort on long harsh rides so that all works superbly well as a package on this bike so to summarize all of that the handling is just absolutely precise and predictable meanwhile it's not harsh it's not unforgiving like some of the other all aero bikes but DC, how does it climb? I can hear you ask. Now, some of you weight weenies out there, you know who you are. You may have been turned off when I said bike weighs in up at the upper range of 17 pounds with my Ultegra build and my just sort of everyday wheels. I'm not using any fancy lightweight over my Obermeyer uh, wheels or any of that. I am not one to pay attention to what the scale reading says because a bike weighing in at 14 pounds, if it has a deadened feeling, horrible feedback, that's not a good bike to me. Bike weighing in slightly heavier, but has, gives me all the right feeling and the feedback and characteristics that I'm looking for, that's the bike that I'll ride. So here's the deal, you guys. Uh, Case in point, there's this route that I go ride about two times a year, springtime and a fall. It's about 86 miles long. I have to climb about 8,800 feet all total, but majority of the climbing comes in at final one third. So you're busting your ass at the first two thirds of the route, like a 60 miles, you're just busting ass. And then final one third about 26 miles you're climbing you're climbing this wall after all that hard effort to get there and then it has it ends with this um like rollers that point upwards so you hit a wall and then you got rollers going up so it's a pretty hard effort this is where boys go and come out as men when you ask me so this is basically my testing ground when I'm like a character uh, when I'm looking for how does a bike really climb. So I'm going to show you my Strava segment uh, records here. 
So if you look at it, uh, there uh, I'm showing you six efforts here, and you could see progressively um, what my records indicate. Look at my third best spot there. So obviously, I've tried. You, you look, you see all the records below that where I try to um, better that uh, segment record, but always failed. So. Back in May of 2017, that was my 15 pound Canyon Ultimate CFSLX. It was the top of the range Canyon Ultimate at the time. That was the mechanical SRAM um, Red. I had uh, light wheels. I mean, that was a super light bike, great handling bike, one of my all time favorite bikes. And back in 2017, I was in actually really good shape. So. That was a really, really good record. But then on April of this year, I actually beat that record by 14 minutes, which is actually shown on one of my other episodes where I um, did a uh, clickbait by saying Prince to save, Pinarello Prince to save me 14 minutes. I'll also link that right here. So on that day, I bested my record from 2017 by 14 minutes. Now, of course, you have to take into environmental difference. Like, you know, was I with other people? Was, was there uh, more wind or less wind? So all of this will come into play. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not the one guy that's gonna tell you, hey, all bikes make difference. You know, if you ride tarmac or over dogma you might go faster that's not true it all comes down to the legs all the top tier level bikes they're all going to be basically the same level because matthew vanderpool will not be any slower when he gets off his canyon air road riding a tarmac or Remco is not going to be any faster because he comes off a of SL7 and mounts up on a Dogma or any other combination you want to position this as. So having said that, look at the record up at the top. November 5th of this year, I beat my best record from six months ago by about a minute. So and that was aboard the Cervelo Soloist. So all things considered, now if you look at the 2022 records that I show you here, top two records, I'm a lot weaker than back in 2017. Bikes are heavier uh, because of the disc brake situation compared to 2017. I've had uh, strokes, I've had seizures. I'm a lot weaker right now, but I am besting my own record at this uh, segment, which takes you know over two hours to conquer between all the climbing and everything so that is the testament to how well cervello soloist would climb under me take that for what it's worth with a grain of salt but bike definitely does climb exceptionally well bottom bracket area is something that i've really fallen into love if that's uh, if that's even possible so beefy bottom bracket as you would notice and uh, it's designed really well so it doesn't look bulky with the junction from cervello's design and kogo bottom bracket ceramic bearings that's in there harmoniously pedaling action really disappears when i'm riding it is a surreal experience, absolutely zero complaint. There is no creaking. My pedaling motion is very smooth. Love the combination. So this is a fantastic bike overall in terms of riding um, characteristics. And it's one that actually puts a smile on my face every time I go ride. Even compared to more expensive bikes with all the marketing stuff that's on there. And you know, this is a bike that just never disappoints every time I take her out. Now, I've received maybe 40 to 50 messages, DMs, emails, uh, texts, Hey, how does it compare to Factor Astro? And somebody also asked, how does it compare to Orbea Orca? So, comparison to Factor Astro, it's really not an or apple to an apple comparison. It's more apple to an orange type of a comparison, if you ask me. Factor Astro is 
pro level frame it's raced by israel premier tech although i think they've been relegated so i don't think they're pro tour team now they're they may be just continental team i don't know however that is a uh, pro level frame set that's you know written by daryl impey chris Froome, uh alex dowsett until he retired uh, last week or whatever so Whereas Cervelo Solo, it's, it's not really a pro level frame. Um, there is a price difference there as well. In terms, of, in terms of ride characteristics, I'm not gonna say one is better than the other. And I'm not even gonna tell you one bike is better than the other because they're equally great bikes to have under you when you go tackle any terrain. Remember, the Factor Austro is a all-arounder. Great, great bike. The Cervelo Soloist um, just, it is cheaper. It's easier on your wallet. It rides superbly. I'm not saying it rides better or worse. I, will, I, I, I can't tell you one is better than the other, much as the same way as I can't tell you if I like one of my kids better than the other kid. I just, but they're very different. Their ride characteristics is very different. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. Compared to Orbea Orca, I think that's a little bit closer in terms of like apple to an apple. Uh, they're about the same price when you spec it similarly or exactly the same. Ride quality is damn near identical, um, but I believe the Soloist has a little bit of more edge when it comes to being aero. Um, when you tuck in, get into the just putting the hammer down position, um, the aero bit is definitely better on the Cervelo Soloist. That's not to say Orbea Orca sucks. I love that bike. All right, so to let's conclude this episode. So let's go with a couple negatives. Admittedly, the seat post is a hella ugly. The seat post, however, does really good job with the clamping mechanism. It's easy and it's solid. It also does not have a setback. I would have normally preferred some setback on my seat post because I'm all torso, less legs. Um, but I was able to find a super good fit based on my uh, proportions. So no complaints in terms of the fit. It's just hella ugly. And because of the proprietary aero shape of the post, you can't just go out and buy a third party seat post and you shove in there until somebody uh, comes up with one, I guess, uh, like a Darimo or Schmolka or whoever. And then uh, secondly, I also feel that especially when you order just a frame set, I think Cervelo should give you the ST36 stem, which they talked so much about uh, for, uh, you know, integration uh, to route the cables under the stem. It doesn't go through the stem, it goes under. So, you know, is it really helpful? I don't know, but I still think it should be part of the frame set order. All right, so this part is the douchey part of my uh, bike episode. So, <laughs> if you cringe, I apologize in advance. When I talked about my Pinarello Prince, I said the characteristics of the bike is, the bike is almost like egging me on. Hey, is that all you got? Give me more power, I wanna go. It rides a lot like my Corvette. When I talked about my Factor Austro, I said it's stable, it's predictable, it's a lot like a German car. It, it's a zip it, it's fast, but it's very grounded feeling and it almost knows what your power output should be like and it really helps you get there and maintain it as long as possible. So I compared it to BMW Motorsport race car. Uh, if I have to give you the same sort of analogy for the Cervelo Solos, here's the way I would put it. With the way it handles, the handling, the precise, the, the precision of it and how it punches way above its weight in terms of a pricing. Complete bike costs you $6,800 from Cervelo. That's not cheap. However, when you look at the landscape of a bike pricing, that's not as bad. It's 
not too bad on your wallet with that said what i would say is this bike rides with utmost efficiency to ride 250 watts average i almost feel like i am doing the least amount of work on the cervello soloist compared to my factor or the pinarello that's not to say it's better than the affirmation of the bikes i just feel like it's i'm doing less work or flip that the other way around if i'm outputting 250 250 250 on all the bikes i just feel like i'm going slightly faster on the soloist whether that's the aero advantage or not take that for what it's worth again this is not a scientific review i never actually clocked myself or uh, measure compare the watts that's just how it feels in terms of a car comparison i would compare then use the analogy this car feels like a porsche 718 cayman why you didn't pony up money like a porsche 911 but you're getting all the advantage of the mid-engine goodness and all that stability perfect balance of that mid-engine porsche you're getting all that with the 718 equally as a sportive excellent precision handling the DNA and the spirit all intact. So that's how I would uh, frame that. I could be way off, but that's just my two cents. Of course, I'm not a professional reviewer, so I don't get the review bikes like I for, uh, you know, mentioned earlier. Nobody sends me anything. So I haven't ridden all the new bikes that came out this year, you guys. Um, so this year we saw Giant's new Propel. Uh, Bianchi's Ultra, Trex, Madone, all these things. But what Cervelo did right is they made Soloist available to purchase at launch. Unlike these other bikes, you couldn't get those. You couldn't order those the day it came out. Or maybe you could have ordered them, but you wouldn't get them for another God knows how many months down the road. So something that's really well done by Cervelo making the bikes available at launch that might be the fact that they don't have to produce hundreds of frames and send them to their sponsored team so they could make them available to the dealers where you and I could purchase right away so that is epic now as mentioned I haven't ridden all the new bikes that came out but because of the things like the way it handles way it rides the price point value to performance the fun to performance, all the ratios all combined together. I'm gonna go out on the limb, despite I haven't written everything that came out. I'm gonna say and declare perhaps bike of the year 2022. So this is one of the best bikes I've owned, how it makes me feel while I'm riding it, how it just disappears under you. And about the same level of performance at the fraction of the cost that is all plus so performance is one thing but how fun it is to ride how i can't just wipe that stupid grin off my face when i'm riding it i'm gonna tell you this is a right weapon at almost every occasion so that is my two cents for Cervelo Soloist. I love this bike. This will, uh, going forward, this will probably be the baseline bike that I compare all other bikes to. All right, I've been Diabetic Cycling. You've been awesome. Keep the rubber side down. Be safe out there. Until next time, you guys all take care. DC out.